With iOS 18.5 now officially out, it's time to talk about the settings you should turn off right away. We're gonna start with Safari today, and then we'll dive into what has become Apple's most hated update in recent memory. I'm talking about what they've done to the Mail app. The first Safari setting we'll talk about is mostly just annoying, but the second could be betraying your privacy, and the third could be slowing down your iPhone. I'll open the Settings app, tap in the search bar, and just start typing Safari. And that'll tap to open up the Safari settings menu. With iOS 18.4 and above, Safari started showing a list of your recent searches whenever you tap the address bar. With browser history, Google search history, Spotlight search history, I don't need any more history showing up on my phone. The good news is that you can turn it off. Just tap the switch next to show recent searches to turn that off. That was the annoying setting. Now we'll talk about a real serious one. We'll scroll down a bit and tap on extensions. Safari extensions are a powerful tool as long as they aren't completely betraying your privacy. Extensions are like mini apps that run in the background of Safari whenever you browse the internet. I have two here and I'll tap to open City Shop. I have no recollection actually installing this extension, but it probably got installed way back when I downloaded the Citibank app after I got a Costco card. Anyway, in City's case, they just wanna help me find offers at over 5,000 online merchants. How could that be bad? Well, this extension can read and alter web pages you visit and see your browsing history on all websites. This includes sensitive information from web pages, including passwords, phone numbers, and credit cards. It's pretty clear that Safari extensions get a lot of access to your phone. Citibank isn't going to steal my passwords, but extensions by less reputable brands certainly could. I say, turn off extensions if you aren't using them, and even if you are, have them ask if they can run on each website. So I'll tap all websites down here and change it from allow to ask or choose deny if you don't need it. Don't give them blanket permission to see everything you do on every website you visit. Onto our last Safari setting. In iOS 18, Apple introduced new features that make it harder for websites to track you. I'm all for that, but especially for those of you with older iPhones, a lot of people are saying it slows down Safari a lot. If you've been experiencing a slower Safari over the last few months, it might be worth turning this one setting off to see if it speeds things up rather than going and buying a new phone. Because slowing things down is one of the number one ways Apple can convince you you need to get a new phone. So let's go back to the main Safari menu. I'll type back in the upper left-hand corner of the screen and then back again and then back again to the main menu. Now I'll scroll down to advanced, all the way at the bottom, tap on that, then we'll tap Advanced Tracking and Fingerprinting Protection and just turn it off. That immediately helped speed things up for a lot of people. So it's a trade-off. I'm all for your privacy. Whoa, there's a plant. But I'm also for you having a phone that one, works well, and two, you not being forced into buying a new phone. If Apple improves this feature later, you can always turn the setting back on. Speaking of tracking, have you ever Googled your own phone number? You might be shocked by what you find. My cell phone number, my parents' home phone number, my work and personal email addresses, my home address, all out there in the open. On how many websites? Click tools and boom, 303 results. It turns out my data was everywhere. I don't care if a company gets hacked due to negligence of an employee or if they just sell my data because either way, my personal information is out there. And that's exactly what Incogni is for. With Incogni, you enter your personal information and they handle everything. In just a couple minutes, 221 data removal requests had been sent. And Cogni has saved me a ton of time and added me to 32 suppression lists, which means that those brokers can never contact me again. It's one thing to block spam calls, it's another thing to get off the list entirely. So take back control over your personal data with Incogni. And you can use code Payette or click the link in the description section below for 60% off an annual plan. Moving on, if there's one thing I've heard about iOS 18, it's people asking me what the heck is going on with the Mail app. Because iOS 18 brought some changes to how your inbox is organized. By default, when you open the Mail app, you now have five categories across the top. So I'll open the Mail app on my phone. I'll swipe up from the bottom of the screen and tap to open the Mail app. Categories are primary, transactions, updates, promotions, and then if you swipe all the way to the right, all mail. If you get frustrated or messages are missing, remember that. Just swipe all the way to the right to see all of the messages in your inbox. The good news is that recently, 
Apple has made these view options customizable. As of iOS 18.5, you can change at least a couple of the more annoying settings in the Mail app itself, whereas previously you had to go into settings to do it. If you prefer the classic Mail list view without these categories, all you need to do is tap the dot 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 icon in the upper right hand corner of the screen and tap on list view. While we're here, have you ever noticed how big all these little icons are on the left side of each message? I hadn't until I did this. If you tap those three dots again in the upper right hand corner of the screen, uncheck show contact photos. Much better, because I'd rather see a preview of the text of the actual email than all those little photos. I think that's much more useful. iOS 18.5 did more than just group messages by category. It also started grouping messages by sender, and that can be kind of risky. If somebody emails you, then emails you again, it becomes a thread. You can open a thread by tapping the blue arrow in the upper right-hand corner of a message. So I'll do that and I can see all the messages that are part of this email chain. I suppose it's great for annoying email chains that go on and on, but there is a risk to using threads. You might miss important messages, and this would be how. I'll tap to open up this message, and I see, okay, Lawrence emailed me, but then I tap back. It still says unread, but I thought I just read that email. Well, the truth is, if I tap this blue arrow on the right side of the date here, I'm gonna expand the entire thread. And I can see that I actually have three unread messages. I've got two from way back here. So I'll close this back up. And to actually get to those unread messages, I have to scroll all the way up here and find the individual little blue dots. And that's why it's risky. With threads, you no longer see every message individually. They become groups of messages and you can miss one. So if you don't like threads, we're gonna to go to the settings app again. I'll swipe up from the bottom of the screen and hold my finger there in the middle to open the app switcher. Then I'll tap settings, tap back, tap back to Safari and back to apps. Now I'll just tap in the search bar, start typing in mail, tap on mail. Then we're gonna scroll down to threading. If you wanna go back to seeing every message individually, Tap the switch next to Organize by Thread to turn it off. And if I go back to the Mail app now and scroll down, here are those two unread messages, and it's harder to miss them if they're actually in your inbox rather than buried in a thread. Next, let's talk about Apple's stupid AI and their stupid AI-powered summaries. This is a true story. A few days ago, I saw a message from someone that said they had had a heart attack, and I panicked. Then I opened the message, and it said something like, oh my God, you almost gave me a heart attack, LOL. It's not cool when your phone scares the crap out of you. It's actually really bad. Fortunately, you can turn off the stupid summaries until Apple intelligence gets intelligent enough to know what to summarize, what to leave alone, or what's a joke versus what's an emergency. We'll head back to the main page of settings, type back to apps, back to settings, cancel out of the search, and we're gonna scroll down to notifications. Tap on that. And here we have Apple Intelligence. We have prioritized notifications and summarized notifications. Tap into summarize notifications and just turn off the switch at the top to turn all the summarization off. Summaries may contain errors, no sh What's interesting is if you turn off summarize notifications and then turn it back on again, you get this new section that clearly says this beta feature will occasionally make mistakes that could misrepresent the meaning of the original notification. Happens a lot to me. Next, choose notifications to summarize. I actually like this. I'll choose to summarize news and entertainment and all other apps, but not communication and social because that's really where it messes up a lot. Or if you're sick of them all, just turn it off until Apple intelligence gets a little less stupid. And that's what I think I'm gonna do. Next, an important Wi-Fi setting that's supposed to protect your privacy, but often just slows down your phone at home or breaks your internet connection. So let me show you that. I'll tap back and then back to settings, and scroll up to Wi-Fi, tap to open up that menu. This is the setting that you change for each Wi-Fi network individually, which is a good thing as you're about to find out. I'll tap the eye next to my home network, scroll down and tap to open up private Wi-Fi address. Not to get too technical, but when your iPhone connects to Wi-Fi, it gets an address. It's kind of like how you need a home address or the post office wouldn't know where to deliver your mail. But your iPhone doesn't have a home address. Instead, it has a Mac address. I know you're with me so far. Until recently, 
your iPhone's MAC address never changed. You had one MAC address for every Wi-Fi network you connected to. Then companies realized, hey, that's one more way we can track individuals, by tracking their iPhone MAC addresses. And it would work until you got a new iPhone. So Apple decides, okay, smart guys, we're gonna give your iPhone a different MAC address for every Wi-Fi network. Good idea. Then they took it a step further and started rotating the MAC addresses so even at home, every time you left the house and came back again, new MAC address. Bad idea. Okay, it's a good idea in theory, but back to the post office. The post office in this case is your Wi-Fi router at home, which is what keeps track of all the addresses on your home network. But your Wi-Fi router is itself a little computer, and like any computer, it has its limits. If its address book fills up, which it obviously would if every time you left home and came back again, it thought, hey, it's a new Mac address and therefore another new phone. These people must have tons of iPhones. What happens is it either slows down or stops working until you unplug your router and plug it back in again. If you're experiencing Wi-Fi problems on iOS 18, consider turning off the private address for that particular network. The fix is simple. Just change it from rotating to fixed and then grab all the iPhones in your house and change them all from rotating to fixed. And then reboot your Wi-Fi router by unplugging it, plugging it back in again, which will flush the DNS. That's real technical. Then unplug your Wi-Fi router and plug it back in again, which will clear out its address book and speed everything back up again. Like I said, you have to do this for every individual Wi-Fi network. Tap back in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, back to Wi-Fi, and to be clear, I'm only recommending you do this on your home networks, because if you're going to Starbucks, their routers are built for handling tons of devices, but not your router at home. I happen to have two networks at home. I have Cafe Adam and the IoT network that I also sometimes connect to. You can tap the I here, come down to private Wi-Fi address, make sure that's fixed. If you're still having issues with your Wi-Fi, you might wanna just turn private Wi-Fi address off just for your home network. And if you do that, you'll see a privacy warning here next to your home network. I can tap the I on the right-hand side. And tracking can happen when your address always appears the same to other devices and people using the same network as you. So at home, the only other devices and people using the same network as you are your Wi-Fi devices. That's why it's safe. Next, a glitch I haven't experienced myself, but I've seen enough people talking about it to feel like I should mention it and it's a glitch with always on display. So let's tap back to Wi-Fi in the upper left-hand corner of the screen or just back to the main page of settings. Then we're gonna scroll down to display and brightness, tap on that. And we're gonna scroll down to always on display. And for the record, auto lock set to never is a bad idea unless you're recording a YouTube video and you don't want your screen to turn off in the middle of it. That's why that's on for me. After the video goes back to two minutes. We'll tap always on display to open up the menu. And let's do an easy test to see if it's working correctly on your iPhone. First, make sure the switch for always on display is turned on. Then hold your hand over the top of your iPhone where the sensors are. And we're gonna fool the sensors into thinking your iPhone is face down on a table because always on display only works if your iPhone is face up. So it's really not always on. And that's why I like it and why it's really not that bad for your battery life, unless it's broken. Okay, hand over the top. Now we're gonna tap the power button, AKA the side button. Notice how my screen is black, even though always on display is turned on. If I take my hand away, always on display. Mine's working fine. If the display turns off and then turns back on when you move your hand away, always on display is working well for you. If it doesn't, something's wrong. And I'd be willing to bet that a lot of people who's always on display is buggy actually just need to clean their phones or their screen protectors because the sensors, as we just found out, are completely in charge of this. That said, if you wanna save some battery life, I will not deny that you can turn off always on display here and save a little bit of battery life. I've also seen a lot of people say that their iPhone battery is dying faster after they update it to iOS 18.5. And the truth is that that is normal, at least the first day after you update, because under the hood, even after your iPhone reboots, there's still a lot of re-indexing and stuff that goes on 
in the background. So it's normal for your iPhone battery to drain faster the first day after an update. It's not normal for it to just get worse and stay worse. And feel free to let me know if you're having any issues with that in the comments section below. I know some of you are wondering where I've been lately because I've made fewer videos this year than I have traditionally in the past. And the answer is, I've needed a little break from YouTube. It's a lot to put these videos together. I wanna to say thank you to the YouTube channel members that continue their support even when I'm not making as many videos. That is a huge help. As you could probably tell in the last couple of videos, upgraded some stuff, trying a little different layout right now in the studio. I'm off to the side, a little more cinematic for you. And I think that for this video, just as an extra thank you to everybody, I'm gonna make the PDF of all the settings we talked about available for everybody to download for free link in the description section below. Still really appreciate your support if you're a channel member, but figured I'd throw everybody a bone with this one. Channel members and other friends out there that I haven't spoken with in a while, I appreciate you. We'll see you here.